Yeah, so this week we'll be talking about the categories of requirements and of which we actually kicked off last week. And so we're just going to discuss more on the categories of the requirements because I think last week we could not uh, really discuss much on that. Okay. And so, like I said last week, functional, what is our functional requirements? So functional requirements, these are requirements that concern with the system, what the system should provide or um, what the solution's supposed to do. So when we are saying about functional requirements, so uh, we are talking about, you know, the, uh, the features, like the function, functionality of the system. Like I can say, I want the system uh, to, as, uh, to accept payments. So that is a functional requirement because we want, so if the function is accepting a payment for the system to have the capability to accept our uh, payment. So that is functional requirement. So anything that you, or requirements that concerns with what you want the system to do, is that is what we define as con uh, functional requirements. And also we discuss about general requirements, uh, which I know somebody asked last week, okay, what is the difference or why is, uh, is there not a business requirement? So when we say general requirements, we've categorized uh, all these um, requirements, requirements that has to do with maybe legal requirements, like if we say the system must support or must be compliant with uh, ISO 20,000, 27,001 or 9,001. So that is uh, a general requirement. So we can go into the general requirement or it has to do with the, the business policy or maybe a business process or maybe a procedure that it, uh, the solution needs to actually meet. So we categorize that on the, uh, the requirements as on the general requirement. So anything that has to do with that is not really functional and is not the non-functional like that has to do with maybe policy, business, culture, language, all those things are classified as uh, general uh, requirements. So anything like business requirements, so we can categorize that on the general requirements as well. And when we, are, when we say technical requirements, so technical requirements, uh, requirements that has to do with software uh, requirements, uh, hardware requirements, uh, internet, any internet requirements, or interconnectivity or interoperability uh, is also. So we can say we want this solution to be able to run on Windows 10, Microsoft Windows 10, because Microsoft Windows 10 is a software, so, so that is also under the technical requirement. So we can say we want the solution to be able to run on Dell uh, 1C. So which means is an hardware. We know the Dell laptops is the hard is an uh, is uh, is uh, is a, uh, what's it called is an equipment that we want to be able to use the system or the application on it. So we can say we want. Um, we want the system to be able to, or the solution to be able to connect um, with other applications like Heroku, uh, SAP, uh, or maybe all Microsoft application, or maybe other systems. You understand? So that is uh, that's also technical requirements. And so when we're talking about uh, non-functional requirements. So these the non-functional requirements is uh, uh, the requirement that define how a solution is supposed to be, like how it's supposed to behave. So it's different from what the, what you want the solution to do, but this is how the solution should behave. So we are talking about availability, reliability, you know, all this ability, ability, uh, capability. Um, uh, mental, <laughs> I don't know maybe mental ability, I don't know if that, that's English is correct, but you know all this capability retention is also part of non-functional uh, non requirements as well. Um, yeah, so, so we just, so I've got examples of some general requirements, so like I said, uh, the system must conform to, we can say we want the application to conform to ISO, um, 
27,001 because this is like international standard. So we just want the application to, so depending on uh, the requirements that your stakeholder actually um, determine that you they want the system to actually support as well. So you just have to write it. So it's not just it has to be. So it depends on the requirements, but it's just for you to understand the categories. Uh, so we can say uh, an example is a solution should meet current data protection has so legislation, uh, like I said earlier, legal, anything like maybe regulatory requirements or uh, legal or maybe uh, legislation, so that falls on that um, general requirements and we have um, the solution must provide must operate United, United Nations accredited software uh, you know so this is also general requirements and we've got if you want the solution you can say whoever that is providing that solution that they need to be regulated by a particular body if there's any requirement like that so you categorize it under the general requirement so we've got examples of technical requirements as well. So like I said, this is software. So we are saying uh, the system must support uh, Mozilla, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer. So whenever, because you need to look at for something like this, because they may not really tell you, you know, but you need to be able to ask as well that, okay, this solution, so what are the browser that we, we are using in the organization that we want it to support? So you need to look at for that because it's not all the time that they will say, oh, we want it to support this software. So you just need to try and you can you need to hack them. So just in case, um, they may not know, but you can hack the technical team like the IT team. So they will be able to give you the requirement because you need to work with them as well to document the requirements. So on the technical requirement, so they will be the one to know uh, what the organization needs to uh, use. And so we have. Um, also, that it needs to be compatible with Microsoft products. So we can say this is uh, is the mic when when we say Microsoft product, we can say oh software, or the application product. So that's still fall under the technical requirements. So um, uh, the issue integrate with Heroku. So it could be uh, a requirement as well. So that we come under the technical requirements. So the system also interface with third party. So um, you know, you could have maybe an application that is actually that maybe you are using soft or third party soft or software. It could be maybe payroll, it could be pension, it could be medical, it could be um, it could be probably maybe oh, the, oh, the people that do references and all those things. So you, probably maybe you want the system to be able to communicate, to be able to speak to that system. So it so it will come under this category. So, and if you look here, my technical requirements, I have priority for it. So, the first one, we have most priority. The second one, we have most priority as well. The third one, we have should most. Um, so, another requirement is that the system must support the use of API. So, so one thing you need to understand is that these uh, requirements, any of your requirements, like I say, you need to have a priority for it. So, like all the things that I've documented, we have priority for uh, priority for it. And so we have the functional requirements. So we have an example, like you know, we say this is what we want the so or solution to do, or how we want the solution to do what we expect the functionality. So we can say you want to be able to the password. It needs to be able to accept maybe alphanumeric special character password. Uh, we can say maybe so. If these are just examples of your functional requirements, so that at least when you are writing it, you need to be able to put it in the appropriate category. So that's just the essence of you know doing this. It's just for you to be able to know the trends and you know uh, between all these um, uh, requirements. So that's another. So we can even say the uh, the system must display available courses with it. So that's the under functional requirement. And if you look at this last one, I said the system shall display location of the course. So that means the uh, the functionality there is the location of location. So you could see here, I said system shall display because you can write your requirements like this. So, but what you need to know, do is that you need to put maybe the most maybe on or uh, maybe above it or maybe it depends on or maybe you could write this in a table then but one thing is that you need to be consistent you know with your requirements how you're going to write your requirement if you want to be using shall, shall, like the same shall display available courses with it 
then you need to write this more like that. So that means all you these requirements, five requirements up here, it needs to have the same font as system SHA. The system SHA display location. The system SHA display available courses. Uh, user SHA be able to set uh, memory password. You, uh, password SHA be minimum of this. Password SHA be, you understand? So then what you need to do is that probably maybe you have a column uh, in front of it that you'll be able to write the appropriate, the corresponding authority. So you just, you just need to choose the... Uh, the method, you know, the style that you want to use. So either you want to write the priority within the sentence or you want to write, create a column for it, then you put all the priorities. So that means you just use sha, sha, sha. So that is that. So once we finish this functional, uh, this, uh, so you can see the sha book um, uh, stuff onto the course. So that means, uh, so you can see here, so that's another example. But what how we just stress is that you need to make sure you choose a particular stat and you are consistent with that. Don't mix it up. If you are going to be using Shasha, you use that. If you are going to be using must or should, then you have to decide on that. So that's another one that the system must have the ability to create a VAT return. So it could be a functionality that you want, you know, or the system to carry out to perform as well. Uh, so once I finish this slide, we'll look at the questions and I'll be able to respond to that. So we have our non-functional requirement that we discussed earlier. Um, the, so we are, like I said, is this about ability, ability, reliability, uh, availability, you know, reliability. So now we, one of the requirements is oh, we need to be, the system must be available 99.9%. .9%. So that means we're talking about the availability of the system. So or of the solution or whatever it is. So we are talking about the availability here. And this another one is the is about backup. So the, that the system must be able to. You see now that backing up the data must be back up every 24 hours. Is not uh is not a function that maybe a user will be able to use. It's something that we want the system to be able to. That's how we want the system to behave to be backing up our data for us, so that in case if there's any uh data corruption or or maybe loss of. Uh, service will be able to, you know, recover uh, our data for, with all oh, to the last 24 hours. And so we have, um, you know, this is about recover. You know, we have backup, then you have to recover. At least when you back up, if you now want to recover it. So this is about the recover. So we are saying we want the system to be able to recover the last eight hours of work. So, you know, this is about, it's, there's so many, you know, information details in this, um, uh, requirements so that's why you have to be uh, you have to really pay attention to data when they are giving you the requirements because all these things really matter a lot so you need to you need to really uh, pay attention uh, to it when they are giving you the requirements and be conscious of it as well and so with our personal data on the system must be retained for, so this is about retention of the sys of the data on the system so that means we are saying we want to be able to retain data for 15 years so some say they want this for 25 years. So these are all the things that will be, you know, under your functional requirements. So you can see here it has the priority as well. So because your uh, your requirements, every of your requirements needs to have uh, a priority, be it technical, general, functional, or non-functional. And also we can say, you know, the response time as well. So we have that. So yeah, so before we go into that, let me uh let's go uh, check this out uh the questions. Okay. So what is the best um uh prioritization? So we don't really have best prioritization because your prioritization, we know we are using Moscow and the Moscow is uh, you know is how we prioritize our requirement. That's what we use for prioritization of the re requirements. So what we need to do is, um, you know, you can't, there's no really, there's nothing like best. So the only thing I can say is that your stakeholder will need to determine, you know, the priority of the of the requirement they are giving to you. So that is what I can say on that. 
And if you say requirement table, to be honest, there's no requirement table, you know, because the, I will show you, I think probably maybe next week, I will show you a sample of a requirement document, but it depends on the organization. It depends on the organization uh, that you that you work with. Some people they may have they may probably maybe have the re, uh, their requirements probably maybe they write they do write it in Excel and some probably maybe they do use um, uh, some people do use Microsoft Word. Most of them use Microsoft Word, and so it depends. It depends on the template that you have in your organization. So you just need to make sure. Um, you know, you use it. And so there are so many, you know, from the national requirement, there are so many things. So it could be probably maybe usability because there are some requirements that will say you need to support, you know, or disability of some people, you know. Uh, you know, there are so, so many requirements. Just need to make sure you pay attention to whichever requirements that they give to you. So then that will help. Okay, so let's move on to use case diagram. Um, so what is... Um, use case diagram and um, so let's see so can you explain the code okay in scope and heart of scope so when you say in scope and heart of scope if a requirement if that is what you are referring to is about the requirements you know you just like if you have project scope because it could be probably maybe the project is just about developing uh, a recruitment system so it could be a solution or application that they want to use that the HR wants to use to be able to manage recruitment. So, and if somebody is not giving you a requirement that uh, they need to be able to upload courses, you know, via the system, you know, courses and uh, recruitment is it's it's I, I, it has nothing to do with recruitment because we are talking about training. We are talking about recruitment. So, so you can say, oh, it's not that you will, you can just capture, but you definitely will let them know that it is. We are talking about recruitment. You are gathering requirements about recruitment, not uh, not a training application. You understand? Not a learning application. You know, management system. So you just need to let them know. So. Sometimes some people will give you some. Um, they will give you requirements that is really out of scope, that is not part of, is not even relevant. So that's why I discussed. I think last week or two weeks ago, that I said the requirements. Your requirements need to be relevant. You know, it needs to be relevant to the projects that you they assigned you to. So you will not be working on learning management system, and somebody is giving you requirements about shopping. You understand shopping system. So you need to be able to you know, uh, identify and differentiate so which one is relevant and which one is out of scope. So you just need to let them know as well. So so we'll move on to our use case diagram. So why do you do we use um uh use case? So use case um diagram. So we use the use case diagram uh to model requirements. So, because both the requirements and systems, because when you are working in a software development um, project, so they may expect you to use um, use case to present a use case because that will actually show them. I'm going to show you, um, uh, you know, maybe in a few minutes about how you can model these requirements because that's what we use the use case for. We use it to model requirements and. Um, and so this diagram is also one of the UML, because I know I talked about the UML probably two weeks ago. Uh, the Unified Model Language is uh, a family of it as well. So you, we have we class diagram, and we've got uh, use case diagram, and I think some other ones as well, like entity, relationship, uh, diagram, is also one of the UML. So, so we will be looking into this because you need, you need to use this to make the requirements so that the technical and the departments will be able to, you know, they'll be able to understand. So because it describes the interaction of the users, we call them actors because in this case we'll be calling the user actors uh, with the system. So it shows the relationship as well. So we'll, we'll model one of it very soon. And so this is what we um, oh, this is what we call this we call actor. This is the stick man or matchstick, <laughs> depending on how you what you refer. This is um so this is actor, and uh, so this is another actor as well. 
So then this uh, rectangle box, this is what we call boundary. We call it boundary system. So, or you can call it system boundary rather. System boundary, you understand this is system boundary, the rectangle. And this over shape is what we call use case. So, uh, so we've got then, we've got this association. This is association, the line between the user and the use case is called association. But, you know, this, you need to really, really um, uh, be careful of this because there's no association, there, you cannot have association line between use case, uh, and one use case and another use case. Oh, sorry, I don't know what's happening. Uh, between one use case and another ca use case, so you you can have that. You understand? You can really have that. So you can only have association line. You can see now there is no arrow, you know, at, at any the side. So you just need to not you are use association line. But we use include and exclude, you know, line between use case. You can have include. You can have exclude. But this is not exclude. But I will show you. Uh, uh, in a minute. So let's move on to because I'm going to use um, uh, what's it called? I'm going to use Visio to model something for you now, so we can just uh, uh, you know practice it. So we say so, and what you need to notice that your actor it could be a person, it could be uh, it could be an organization, but when you have a system, it's going to be a rectangle, which I'm going to uh, do something here. So uh, the actor is uh, represents who uses this system, you know, this particular system, this system boundary. So is your actor that interact with the system? So these are the activities that they carry out. So let me just uh, now move on to um, Visio. So you bear with me because so this is my Visio. So I'm going to model a system uh, now. So this is our Visio. You can see here. I hope you can see that. So we can see our Visio. And now you have several templates. This is for UML. And if you want to do a flow chart, so you use this template. Uh, the cross functional, which we are going to talk about uh, later on as well. This is this is what we'll be using. But because we want to actually um, use uh, model requirements, you know, right now, so we will use use case. So I will select this one. So then I'll click on this one. I think I have to find this one. Then click on create. Okay. So now this is like a template that you have right now. So what I can do, I can decide to probably maybe just do new one. So here you can see I have a blank, um, uh, blank uh, paper, uh, paper right now. So because I need my boundary system, the system I want to actually that you have at the mo that you want to work on, so I can just drag that. What you just need is to just to drag it. So I'll drag that and just adjust the shape. Oh, that's the map. So, okay. So, okay. So I want something that I'll be able to see. Okay. Yeah, so this is my system so that's the system we want to so what we want to do we want to model online shopping I assume uh, they've given you a project that you are you should get document requirements for a new online shopping system it's could even be an existing that they just want to modify so so we want to model online shopping system so you are working on a project to develop um, an online shopping system. So this is what. So this is our system now. So what I'm going to do, you can see that there is something in here, like tiny one. Uh, I'm going to type in there. So that is for me. It's a name. So that's the name of the system. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type online, um, online. Sorry, I can't really see because okay, online shopping system so you can change the fonts if you like so but let's see uh if i can change that uh, here so uh okay i think it's not uh, okay let's see if we can change that fonts uh okay yeah okay let me use that clue okay 
Um, so you can centralize that, you know, put that in the center or just put it at the left hand side or in the middle. So but I will just put it at the, let me just leave it at this, uh, oh, or let me just centralize it. Yeah, okay, yes. So now I've named my, the system that we want to actually work on. So the next thing that you need to do is that who are the people that we interact with this system? So what I want to say is that customer will interact with this system, so which is, uh, is going to represent like the stick, uh, the matchstick. So this is my hat toe. So if you click on, if I, if I click on it now, I'll be able to, oh, sorry, that's another one. Yeah, okay. So I can say, um, so I want to say customer. So that's the name of my, uh, the actor for this one. Then I want to have, um, you know, just a guest at the site. You know, like before you have a customer, it could be probably maybe you have other people uh, that just uh, browse without even shopping, like doing window shopping. Uh, so I'll put another one here. So let me just put that one here. And I will uh, also say maybe guest or something. Guest. Okay. So all you just need to just to drag it. Uh, sorry, I will not be able to look at the messages now until I finish this. And so then do we have any other, um, um, maybe any other, probably I want to say we have a system. So, but what I would recommend you use, you can actually... Um, use another shape here. So I'm going to use, uh, let me see, uh, that's my flowchart, uh, basic flowchart, because I need to use, I want to use, um, um, let me see, I want to use, I want to use this to represent a system. So you can use rectangle to represent a system, but some people do use, uh, you know, this act or this matchstick, but to be honest, I don't really see how that really relates, but I'll just, um, I'll just use that a rectangle. And um, can we think of any other, um, any other personnel? Just let's go back to our UML so I can just click that. Let me probably maybe do one person again. I don't know what I will call this person that I want to say it's interacts. But let's say, um, hmm. Uh, let's say uh, warehouse manager. Let's say warehouse manager. Okay. So, um, okay. So we now have all the people that we interact with this system. So now, what I just need to actually represent the activities, what they carry out as well, what they do, as in the requirements and the functionality that we actually want. So we have one here. So let's say I want, uh, that means a customer uh, with force, uh, you know, like when you, uh, one thing is that you need to make sure when you are arranging this use case, but let me just put um, more on uh, here. So let me put like five. So, but what I want to, uh, what I want to try and, to, um, you know, let you know is that you need to make sure it's logical, you know, it's in order because I can put, make payments here and just put login here. That doesn't really make sense. You understand? It's not really logical like that. But what I will say here, uh, what will this, uh, maybe the guest do? I can say the guest will first view an item. Let's say view products on the website. View product. And one thing you need to know is that you need to start with a verb. You understand? So this view, so it has to start with a verb. So uh, that is also what you need to put. So after viewing the product, and it's possible if you, you know, like if you are shopping online, you, you, when you view the product and you now see something, a product that you actually want to, you know, you want to buy. So I can say then you want to create an account. So I can say we want the system, we want the customer to be able to create an account. So that's just our requirements, uh, create accounts. So you can see I'm starting with create, which is verb. And so here uh, I can say purchase, uh, purchase products. And I want to have another one, which is, um, uh, let's say, um, process, uh, process payments. Um, yes, 
process. So that means purchase is about maybe maybe making a payment. So let me say process payments. Um, yeah, and uh, let me add more here. Um, so you can have, if you have so many requirements, so you can have like three different use case diagrams or you can have four, you understand, depending on the number of requirements. So it's not necessary that you have to fill, uh, you know, this box with like uh, 10 or 20, you understand. So you just try, you can have like three different groups of it. So uh, let's say you have, so here I want to say uh, assign other number, assign other I'm oh, sorry. Assign other number. Yeah, we could have another one that would say send email or send notification. You understand? So we can say another one here. We can say track. So I can say track uh, other. Yeah. So now, so I've got, so what I'm saying here is that I'm letting the developer know that we have all these requirements. So we want the capability of the system to be able to view products. We want to be able to create an account. We want to be able to, you know, maybe the user must be able to create an account. Uh, we, want, uh, we want the guests to be able to purchase products. So what do you need to do now? So I need to link it, you know, the association. So this is my association now. So you can see what I said the other time. This is the extend and include, but I'm not going to use that today. Uh, so I'm just going to use the association. So what I'm going to do now is to, or I can just use, and one thing you can do, you can use any of this line. Let me just say any of this line. So, uh, so, but uh, that is what that is not really what I want to do because I can say this person is um, uh, let's say registered customer. Let me change this to registered customer. My system is not uh, not that's not what I want to do. Okay, let me just leave it. Okay, let me just leave it like that. I don't want to mess up this thing. So let's say we are saying. So I want to draw another one. So. Uh, guess, you know, when you browse a website, what you first do, you view the product. So when you finish viewing the product, the thing is, when you, you can now create another account, you create an account, so you draw the arrow to what the person is doing. So you can have, you know, as many links to the use cases, uh, as many as you want. So now, once you do that, that means when you create an account, you know, you become a customer. So I cannot say it's customer that will now be able to purchase, you know, because as a guest, you can't purchase as a guest. You have to register, you know, to be a customer before you can now, you know, or make purchase. So that's why I'm linking it there. So I need to know that you don't need a narrow. Even when you're using this template, definitely you don't have anything like arrow here. Yeah. So then what we'll process the payment? So I can say, so I can... You know, this system, uh, normally I can supposed to have that. I can just say, uh, let's say uh, payment system. Yeah, let's say payment system or bank. So although normally it's supposed to be at the bottom here, but I would just leave it like that. <laughs> so payment system, and I'm saying this is real manager. So what, what uh, is going to process the system? Payment. So that means this, uh, the, uh, the payment system or the bank is going to uh, process the payment. And I'm, we're going to assign other number. So let's say the warehouse manager. Oh, warehouse manager. Let's just put it that way. Uh, okay, I think there's a mistake in the warehouse. So it's, S is missing. But <laughs> let's just put it. Okay. So this is the warehouse manager. And if you look at the bottom as well, track order, my customer is going to be able to track order. So, so now this is my this is the system. You've now moved up the requirement, you know, because and when you use this, you still need to be able to document it as in, you know, like writing the requirement in detail. But it's just like, you know, visualizing it so that when they developer when they are looking at it, they will be able to understand, you know, what you expect them to do. I don't. Uh, this need to go back here. Yeah. What happened before? Um, I don't know what the uh, just uh, but let me just move this particular. Yeah. Okay. I need to make sure it links back here. Okay. 
so that one links back here and this one links back here let me just delete that and do it again so I uh, link the guest review product um, as, um, I don't know why that's uh, um, sorry I just need to adjust this system so that I like my diagram to be neat <laughs> yeah Okay, oh, okay, maybe that will be there. Okay, okay, mm. so customer. No. So, purchase guest, and we have create an account. So, you know, so this is just to show that the you know your requirement. So then, what will happen is that the developer will be able to know that what you are saying is that the customer is the customer that's supposed to be able to purchase you know products, not just guests. So, and I'm saying the guest should be able to view products, the guest should be able to create an account, and the guest should be able to, you know, the customer, when the person registered, then the person should be able to purchase, and the bank system will be the one to process, and uh, the warehouse manager will be able to assign, um, you know, assign, uh, what's it called, assign the order number, excuse me, and the, and, and the customer will be able to track, uh, this so so there's no point you having a use case that does not really have you know any association there's no point of having it so this is your you know how you model your requirement that is just it so so we use the use case to specify or to specify the actions that will be performed you know uh, by the hatchers and also is a great source for you to be able to know the user interface you know to demonstrate the user interface requirements and also is also to model the functionality of the system so you can use uh, you know use case to model the you know non functional requirement because you cannot do that availability reliability you know you can't do that so it's just for you to be able to model the uh, functional uh, uh, functional requirements and also is to be able to see what actions that the we is doing what and you know the bank manager or the warehouse manager what is the person going to do you know the functionalities of that as well so it's just describing the interaction of the hassle with the system and um, Yes, yeah, so and what you just need to remember is that use case you begin that with verb, you understand? And also you can say book room, cook food, print from, you know, you can name it, but it just have to be so your use case just have to be in verb and you need to make sure it's really looking it looks very neat and you arrange it as well. You know, because that will really help the developers and whoever is going to work on the you know the system. Uh, to be able to understand and know what you actually want them to do. And also, you know, like sometimes, you know, like we call this, uh, you know, this left or right hand side, you know, we call it secondary, uh, secondary hacker. So we have the people that, is, that are initiating, you know, the set of activities. So we can call them primary actor, you know, secondary actor. Do you don't really, <laughs> or you just need to know is the actors and the association and all the same. So boy, they can just say oh, which ones are the primary actor and which one is the uh, secondary actor. So the primary actor initiates the use of the system. Why this warehouse manager is reacting to the use of the system? Because the warehouse manager cannot 
you know, initiate anything. So the customer or the guest needs to initiate before the warehouse manager can actually, you know, do any activity there as well. So there are so many, you know, things that you can also, we have what we call generalized actor. So, but at least that is not like a basic one. So, but it's, uh, you can read up on that. And there is include, exclude as well. So, which um, I, I'm not going to do uh, now. So, yeah, so and if you're asking, asking who needs to document this use case, so it has to be BA, you know, as a BA you need to document this with your requirements as well, you understand? So mostly you use this for, you know, software development, you know, for them to be able to see who is interacting with the system. Uh, so I will go back to see the question now. Okay. How do we assess the Microsoft Visio? The Microsoft Visio, you have to, you have to purchase that. You can get that on. I think you can get that on eBay. You understand? You can get that on eBay. Do you really? Do we really have to put this requirement in this order? You know, it depends on your requirements. You know, this is just for online shopping. You understand? Online shopping system. You know, it just has to be logical. You know, it's just like when you're saying, oh, you want to demonstrate something about. Uh, let's say application form, and you are saying um, apply, 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 be fill a complete a form, print a form. You know you can't say print a form without completing it first. You understand? Or print completed form and complete a form. So because you have to complete it before you can actually print it. So it's just to be able to you know to be logical, so that when somebody is reading it, they will know what needs to happen. You know, although it's not like uh, that is mandatory, but you know, um, it's logical that it should be like that. So it's logical that it should be like that. Uh, so that's what I would say there. And um, with the stakeholder, understand this diagram fully. To be honest, this is just for it's for the the technical team that would develop the system. It's not for the stakeholder. Except your stakeholder just wants to look at it and understand it and just, you know, when you are working them through. But definitely you will explain it to the stakeholder if you have to. But the purpose of the use case diagram is for the IT team, you know, for them to be able to know the requirements. Because it gives them better understanding. You know, like when you are writing a requirement, sometimes the requirement may not really be able to explain it properly, but when they visualize it, they'll be able to understand it better because it's just like uh, it provides better information for the technical team to be able to know, you know, what they actually uh, need to do. You understand what you are expecting from them. You understand. So that is um, um, that is that on that one. Um, my question is okay. Let me go through that. Um, what uh, tools can we use to draw this use case? I've said that before, Microsoft Visio. And you can use, um, you can even use Lucid Chat as well. I think you can use that as well because there are so many software that you can use. You understand? There are so many software that you can use uh, for this. Um, can we connect the customer to view products? Yes. Okay. Yes, I can see. Okay. Uh, let's see the customer to view products. Yes, yes, we can do that. Uh, let's see that one. Uh, yes, uh, okay. So, customer to be product, yeah. So, it just depends on whatever requirement it is. If they want the payment system to be able to see the assign order, that means you will have to put a use case there to say uh, view the order or authorize. If you want to have a use case f to authorize payments, you can have the use another use case here. It's just that you just draw the association line, you know, from the payment to say authorize. And even if it's just delivery or send email, you can have as many as you uh, like, you know, you can have as many as you like, but it's just that, you know, a lot of, uh, most organizations definitely, we know that everybody uses um, Visio to do this, um, yes. So you can use uh, Visio Lucid Chat, yes, you can have that. Can you use diagram uh, alone to build a system? No, no. You need to, whenever you use this diagram, you still need to document. You know, because, and the reason being that, you know, in the diagram, you, you, you can't see the priority there. So you cannot really say, you, because there's no priority, there's no how you're going to be able to write priority here. So that is why you still need to write a document to back it up, to say, oh, this is the priority. Uh, the user must be able to create, um, must be able to view 
product you understand is a must um the customer um the customer must create accounts yes we can say the um the warehouse manager should be able to assign order number it could it should but you, there's no way you can specify it here so that is why we can't uh we are not you know using uh this that is why we are not using uh so that's why you need to document this properly it's just that you can embed this or you can use this as appendix you know so it's just providing more information for the uh, for the developers, you know, to be able to know what you expect them to build and the functionality of the system, and we should be able to have access to do this. Are these other ways? Um, okay, let me see the other question. So, are there other ways to interpret this? Uh, well, I don't because you can. Um, you know, we are still going to uh, discuss about user stories next week. So, because you can use write this again in a form of user stories as well. But you still need to do this for any software development. It's advised that you do use this use case diagram, and then you write, you know, the documents like the in words, you know, to back it up again to explain it. Then definitely you need a user stories as well to, you know, to back this up for them to be able to understand it better. That is it. So, but we are going to discuss user story next week. So, I think for now we need to move on. Uh, um, yeah. So, yeah. Let's proceed. Okay. And so um, we've done that. We've done this, and uh, use case we've moved that. So, data flow diagram. So, when I say data flow diagram, um, so it's just for us. It's just a diagram to show the flow of data. And uh, we call that context diagram. So you have different levels of uh, data flow diagram, but we are going to talk about uh, level zero, which is the context diagram. So that's what we're going to do now. So it's just a um, high level framework, you know, for you to be able to show the interaction of the, the data within the system. But let's proceed. So when we say data flow diagram, is a, like I said, you know, it's just to show the flow of data through a process or system, and because, so it shows you, it provides information about what is what data is going in and what data is coming out of this system or the process. So we have different symbols as well that we use for this. Uh, we have rectangle, we have circles, so we have arrows and short labels. We will see. Then you can use smart draw, visio and lucid chart as well to draw these and any other uh, software that you think is relevant. I'm, I'm sure this, oh, this one's are common, so that's why I'm mentioning it. So you can use Visio as well. So these are the notations of data flow diagram. So you have um, entity, so that is external entity, so which is interacting with the system. So this is like a process, we call it process or system. Uh, so this is the data flow, so this shows uh, arrow going in, data that is flowing into the system here. Uh, this one is going to show data that is, you know, coming out of the system. And you use this symbol for your database, you know, to show your maybe, you know, any we call it data store, so for your database. Uh, so, like I said, context diagram is a top level, you know, diagram, and it's also called level zero or data flow diagram as well because it provides you like high level information about you know the data that is flowing in and out of the system and also you need to know that when you are drawing your context diagram you must only have one process or system like one circle you know because for level zero you have just one uh, one circle but for level two, two level one or level one DFD you know, you may have like three or four. Then for level two, you may have like eight. But we are just going to discuss it uh, about the level zero. But all this, like for the context diagram as well, you know, it just depends on the template that you are using the organization. So you'll be able to know whether you need to do it or not. But not all projects that you would do context diagram, but at least the template that you come across. you And then with your experience, you'll be able to know that, okay, I need content diagram a, a, like for this system to be able to show what is going in and out. So, but, so at least once we finish this discussion, you'll be able to know how you can apply that. So it's eye-level framework, you know, to show the interaction 
of the uh, system with the external entities as well. So it, sh it just shows you the boundary system, like all the, it could be maybe the department, it could be, it could even be a person like customer. So we'll be able to show that. Uh, so let's go into that. Uh, so yeah, so uh, let me also do content diagram. So now I'm going to choose another, let me see. So here you can search here. So I'm going to search data flow. Uh, I'm sure you to bring it up. So my system is slow, so <laughs> you have to be. So you can see here, so this is our data flow diagram shape. You can see here, this is DFG. So yeah. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do a new page. Just click on the new page. And so you can see here it's a data process. What I want to do, I want to show uh, data that is flowing. You want to show hotel booking system. So I'm going to do this. So this is my um, this is my system. So I can say so uh, let's say auto booking system. I'm increase that font. Okay, I hope you can see that properly. Yeah, let me. Okay, so now, so this is the system that we want to show the data inflow and output of data in there. So you can see here we have data store, and also we should have. Um, uh, we have our entity. You can see different. You see the shape here. So we are going to use entity. So this is our entity. So we want to so so like I said, the entity is you know like the interaction with other systems. So it could be customer, it could be anyone. Uh, it could be a database. If it's a database, we just use that. Uh, 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 no, uh, so I think I want to use because I don't usually use the square. I usually use the uh, you know the rectangle. So I'm going to, but some people do use square to be honest. So. I'm going to use because it's say external interactor, so I'm going to use rectangle because that's what I do use. Uh, so you can change the, you know, you can, you know, as in, uh, you can change this blue background. So, but it's a default uh, from Microsoft. So, but you can change it. But I'm not going to change it because of time, because we still have, I think, one or two to do. Uh, so I'm going, to, I'm just going to put all this ones there. And so here, I'm going to say, uh, this is my, this is customer. So we have customer, so we want to say the customer is interacting with this hotel booking system. Uh, so which is, um, I want it to be bold, I don't know why. So then I want to say, uh, let your shape be consistent as well, be consistent with your shape, you know. Don't let one be small and the other one big. I mean with the, you know, like this rectangle, I have to make sure, I can't leave it like this because you can see this one is too small. So I have to make sure it's, you know, like almost the same size. So because it makes your diagram, you know, uh, look beautiful, you know. So. Let's see this one. So now I'm saying I have, you know, customer that is um, interacting with the system, and I have, you know, like hotel booking system. Definitely, you have receptionist, receptionist. Um, yep. Yeah, okay. I hope you can see that. And uh, here, let's say we have um, our chef that cook the food for the hotel for the guests. Uh, let's say we have here. Yeah, we have um, hmm, hotel manager. Uh, auto manager. And let's say we have another one, uh, maybe like a regulating body. Maybe, yeah. Let's let's think about that. Okay. So let me have another one here. So let's see here. Let me put it here. And I can say this is the uh, regulate. Uh, Let's say regulator. So let me just say regulator. So depending on you know who will be or the the system 
or the people that will be, you know, interacting with the system. So like now, it's saying that I'm saying to the, whoever that is going to the technical team, say, you need to know that we'll have customer that will be relating with the system. Uh, also, reception will be interacting with the system, uh, our regulator system. It could be their system. It could be maybe the regulator, like the user itself. And it could be then we have maybe chef that is going to be, you know, interacting with the system as well, and also the hotel manager. So now, what you need to do, because we are saying this is about data flow. So now, I'm saying, um, so you can use, here, yeah, you can use any, let's use our uh, arc sign. So you can use either straight line or arc, you know, line to do this. So here, what do you think, you know, the customer will be, uh, the type of data the customer will be, you know, inputting into the hotel system. So we are talking about maybe they will be inputting their personal, their names. So let's write name here. Uh, so I can say names. So uh, names. So I'm saying names. Uh, names. Uh, their address. Um, so you can put, put it like in a list, but I'm just to save a space, or oh, that's what I'm just going to, so you can say name, address, uh, let's say their passport number, you know, like some, or some people, some, some places you will go there and they will ask you for your pass, passport, maybe even if it's maybe like international, they may ask you for that, let's say passport number, you could see your yeah, names is a noun, so address is a noun, like data, because data is and now you understand, you know, so I'm saying passport number. So I'm not saying record name, input passport number. No, because I'm just talking about the data, which is like a noun to me. Uh, so we are saying their telephone number. Uh, somebody say, uh, what did they say again? So we can say their arrival date. Arrival. Let's say their arrival date. Uh, we can say departure date. Departure date. Uh, what else can we think of? Okay, let's just maybe uh, their room type. Let's say you know because you may want to actually select uh, room type as well. Room type, room type. You know, so at least you are just you 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 get the gist that I'm trying to say here. So so what I'm saying here is that I'm saying uh, you know uh, let me draw this to make sure it's. I just want to do the arrow. Okay, let me put it back. <laughs> let me, okay, yeah. So I'm saying this data, their names will be input into the system. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, because this is not really showing. Let me just use... Um, uh, because you can't really see the flow. Because you need to be able to see, you know, the flow of the data. Because like now, you can't really see what is it coming out, is it coming in. So that is why I need to use the proper one. So we go to line. Um, okay, line here. Yeah. Okay. Line arrow here. Okay, that's what it's supposed to use. Uh, let's use this one. Yeah. Okay. So I hope. Let me drag that. Yeah, line. Uh, yeah. Hmm. What's up now? Is it going to now? Okay. Yeah, it's showing the shape now. Okay. So now I'm saying. All this, uh, you know, so you can see the arrow now. So is this is what is going in here? So I supposed to use the uh, remove the the arc one behind, but <laughs> sorry, I can't because of time. So okay, the arc one is even there anyway. So well, let's put it that way. Yeah, okay. So you can decide to use R or the arc or straight line. So but to be consistent, so let me be using maybe arc. Let's say I want to use arc. So here. Uh, so, what do you think the system we give back to the hotel booking system we give back to the customer? So, from what I can think of is um, so le because I need to change the arrow now, uh, which is going to be this one. So, so now I need to do. 
arrow here okay so now I'm going so it's going here from here so you can see it's going back so because what I'm saying is that the system will be returning no sorry still I'm going to that side arrow it's supposed to be this one okay it's supposed to change that position okay let me try the other way around does so see okay yeah so I suppose to start from that one okay yeah so now what we are saying here is that uh, it will be we we're going to have let's say room number uh, room number right um, room number so you know like if you are booking so when you put in all your details maybe you are just going to put it's going to give you room number uh, let me see which other message you can tell there okay thank you okay booking confirmation good thank you so you know so I can say booking confirmation I hope I'll be able to continue there um, okay booking this one is nice enough today okay sorry room number booking confirmation confirm uh, okay booking reference confirmation booking reference yeah okay so let's just say it like that so so what we're saying is that so the customer will receive all this detail you know data from in so that is when the technical team are, when they are building the system they'll be able to factor in that the customer must be able to receive all this data and these are all the information that the customer will be uh, putting in as well so maybe we should just do two more so that we can move on from this so like the receptionist so let's say uh, uh, let's start with that again. So let's do our line. Uh, I'm going to be using like from now. So um, yes, what would that be? So yeah, let me not start from here. Maybe that will help. That will. Okay. Okay. So you can see this is one is um the in and out. So now we are talking about what this uh the reception will be him putting in. You know sometimes the re reception will the receptionist will check the persons in so we can search say checking um no uh or oh, let's say arrival date, let's say arrival date. Uh, because uh, as the person is doing it, will be putting in arrival date, the patch date as well, you know. Uh the patch the patch of it. Uh, it could be the customer details. Customer details. And uh, what else could we think of? Okay, let me just put it that way. Uh, the, so, like, the, you know, the address and everything. And so, and it could be definitely the direction we're supposed to change the direction of the you know this uh, <laughs> this particular one but i will see i will try and see if i can do that soon so then if the customer put in all this information that uh, i mean the receptionist if they put all this information that means probably the system will give them the room number you know like the room number um uh, maybe room number, maybe access code, maybe for the customer. You know, it could be, you know, so many things. Uh, yeah, you know, so many things. Access code. You know, uh, let's see what else do you think. Uh, you know, reference. Yes, yeah, so it's to give reference as well, like that. So it's just for you to understand. So let me see if I can change the test direction here. Uh, test direction. Let's see. I should be able to change the, you know, the direction of the, uh, the position. Let's say, but you just you need to change the direction of this. But I, I'm trying to figure how the this thing. But because it has to be, you know, readable. Because like now your stakeholder or your technical team, you know, they will not be, you know, you can't expect them to be bending their. Uh, okay, position. It's a position. Where is okay position? Oh, thank you. Uh, position auto align okay let me use a rate <laughs> let's see okay 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 um 
Yes. So, you know, we have that. So is, we are saying the receptionist, we put in our RAD, the customer details, the departure, and the system, we give that. So like that as well, we can say the chef, it's possible that the, the chef is just, um, you know, uh, just getting information out. It could just be maybe their, uh, their meal, you know, or maybe their diet information, their dietary information. It could be anything, you understand? It could be just only getting some data out. It could be, you know, getting or maybe maybe inputting data or you are getting something out of the system. So it's not that. It has to be, you know, uh, you know, you have to have, it's, it's not compulsory that you have to have data flow data in and data out so you just need to you know demonstrate what is doing so it's just that it helps you know it helps the uh the technical team to be able to understand you know what is um you know the data that will be flowing to into the system and um out of the system so that they will consider that they will put all those things uh in consideration as well and so yes let me check the Okay, rotate shape. Okay, thank you. And um, yeah, so and that is that on the on um, on contest. Yeah, on contest diagram. So you need to complete this as well. <laughs> so, but because of time, I'm not going to do that. So let's go back to our slides. So that's just contest diagram. And so yeah, okay. So like you know, <laughs> so we have just I need to test. You know, like what you've um, learned uh, so far now. Which technique involves uh, workshop participants are uh, asked for their ideas in turn? Can you type that, please? Um, so let's see. So I want us to do the first one first. Um, yeah. So which technique? I'm I'm not sure if I'm blocking you anyway. So but let me just try and share this thing. Um, sorry. Okay, okay. So I'm expecting your question, please. We, I mean, your answers. Uh, which technique involves participants a hacks for their ideas in tones? For their ideas in tones. Round robin, yes. Round robin, yes. Yes, the answer is round robin. So like that is the one I said, people does not really like it because they may feel you are putting them on spot and if they don't even know it, you know, they would not really feel okay about that. Yeah, so the second question, it says, um, what types of requirements uh, is A, let's answer A first, what type of requirement is uh, the system could be compatible with MS, MS window, what type of requirements do you think that is? We've talked about categories of requirements today. So what type of requirement do you, do you think that is? MS window, yeah, is non-functional requirements. So because this is, sorry, it's not non-functional requirement, it's not functional. It should be compatible with MS windows, MS window. MS Windows 10, technical requirements, because we said technical requirements, it has to do with hardware, software, internet, and like interconnectivity or interoperability. So is, um, yeah, it's technical requirements. So because it has to do with software. And B, we said the application is not functional. So the answer is technical, it's technical. It must be compatible with the Microsoft Windows 10, which is software, it comes under technical. So we go for B. So the application must be back up every 11 p.m. daily. Every 11 p.m. daily. Application must be back up every 11 p.m. daily. Yes. So is non-functional requirements. So because it's back up, it has to do with backup. Yeah, non-functional requirements. Yeah, good. Well done, everyone. And C, Umer Resources Manager should be able to create staff reports. So C, yeah, functional requirements. C, functional requirements. Yeah, yes, well done, everyone. The last one, the application shall meet data protection 2018 legislation. Waiting, 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 waiting. 
Yes, it's general uh, requirements because it has to do with all these policies, business legislation, you know, regulations, you know, uh, business um, culture, language, you know. So it's general requirement. Yes, good. Well done, everyone. And um, yes, and so this next one, use case number three, use case. Diagram can be used to move the business process. True, true or false? True or false? This case diagram can be used to move the business process. True or false? I'm expecting to see more answers. Okay, it's false. It's false because you cannot use use case diagram to model a business process a business process is totally different you know <laughs> probably maybe because i've not you know because i say because you're supposed to know this because i said use case diagram we use that to model the requirements not business process is more it's for requirements is to model the requirements so it's not a uh, business process so it's false Number four, what can you use to move the requirements? <laughs> it seems this is like repetition. <laughs> yes, use case diagram because I just mentioned it anyway. So use case diagram, so that's what we use to move our requirements. I just mentioned it, yes. Uh, number five, what level is contest diagram? <laughs> yeah, level zero, yes. <laughs> just want to check if you're actually following me. Yes, yes. Uh, level zero and DFD is an acronym of K. Okay. Yes, data flow diagram. Yeah, well done, everyone. Number seven, duplication of requirements is allowed in requirements documents. True or false? Okay. Yes, it's false because it's not possible to write the same thing twice, you understand, in the same document. So it's not possible. So well done, everyone. Yeah, well done. Okay, so now we are moving on to uh, the business process. Um, yes. Okay, I hope we'll be able to finish up with this one. If not, we'll have to do it next week. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so... Now, if we ask ourselves, what is business process? Uh, a business process, I can say, is a means whereby an organization, which an organization used to carry out the act uh, operations, I can say is a series of actions or steps or sequence, you know, or procedures that the business used to perform a particular you know, uh, that leads into probably maybe a particular business uh, objective, you know, I can say that. So um, our business, so we have, uh, so, so we have different types of uh, business process modeling that we can use. We have what we call flowchart diagram, which I think everybody knows that. Hey? <laughs> you know, so our flowchart, we have cross-functional diagram. So cross-functional flow diagram, that is where you know, the, function, the flow chart is the one that you have, you cannot really differentiate. So, you know, it's just only, uh, it's just one uh, from, top, top, uh, from top to bottom. You understand? You can't really see the, you know, the difference. Who is doing what? You know, you can't really see, but I will show you that. The cross-functional diagram, that is also different. We have, uh, also, there's another uh, t notation that we use for this. So we have different notations that we can use, but we are going to look into the business process modeling notation as well. So the flow chart. So when we look at the flow chart, so this is the flow chart. So when you are doing the flow chart, so it could be you want to say, how, did they, um, how can you maybe recruit a staff or maybe... Uh, how, can, how do they make a bow? You understand? It Maybe it could be to manufacture something. You understand? So here you have a start and you have, uh, you know, the end as well. So this is just from Visio. This is a template. And this is like a decision box. So, you know, like in here, you can't really see. You don't know who is carrying out these activities. You don't even know who is doing the decision. You don't know who is carrying out this particular activity. You cannot really differentiate. You know, it's just showing you that Probably maybe here, somebody carry out, they do this, uh, they print the form, then they decide as the person pass. If the person is successful, what happens? Maybe if the person fails or uh, unsuccessful, maybe it turns, 
you know, you can't really see who, is, who carry out this activity. You can't really see the difference, but, you know, that is just flow chart. Then the cross-functional one, so which is more uh, detailed, you only use this, you know, the cross-functional one, you only use it when you, are, when you have more than one team or department or it could be organization, it could be person, you understand? That's when you use it. You know, you can, you can say that this is similar to the, one, to the flow chart. It's just that now we can differentiate who is doing what. You understand? So I'm saying, I can say this is going to be done by line manager. This is going to be carrying her. This is the, so this is pool. We call it pool. You understand? This is, the whole thing is pool. You understand? Um, sorry. So the whole thing is pool. We call it pool. Then we call this, you know, like this column line, the row, we call it swim. We call it lane. You know, it's just like a swimming pool. So, the, you know, you call the whole pool, you know, a pool. <laughs> you know, and then you have different people, different countries competing, you know, in different lanes. So that's why they call it swim lanes. So you use that as well, you know. So you can use that to model process. And um, so sometimes you just you can you just you may just want to understand. They may tell you you can tell them how do you manufacture a biscuit. You understand? So they will tell you the process. Then you will be able to document the process. So you can have uh, what they are doing now, which is current. You understand? If you remember, we said as is. So which is the current process? Then you may use this as well to demonstrate. You know uh, the. Uh, to visualize the to be that's the future how they want it to be you understand so it's just like providing a visualization of uh, you know of the process you know because you can write this in the documents and it will be a long you know a long one it could be two pages but you know it, this is easier for anyone stakeholders you know technical team to easily glance through and they'll be able to understand what is doing what what we is doing what and what is the process they will be able to understand it easily you know with that so it helps you to understand the process you know just like the definition and just like english language just the definition the process so you have you know we use this for stars and we use this for you know task so we'll try and quickly do one before we run out of time. Yeah, we quickly do one. And so I think that is the next one. Let me, uh, let's see what we have here. Swim lane diagram here. So, so yeah, you call it swim lane diagram. It's actually on the cross-functional uh, flowchart. So that's what. So we use our swim, uh, our visual again. So here I can just type um, cross-functional, cross-functional. Uh, Let me just. So you should be able to load her. Okay. So because I just want to bring the template up, or although it's something that I can, uh, you know, you can see here cross-functional flowchart. So this is what the shapes I want to use. So yeah, let's do another page. So this is our page now. So what I want to do this, you can see here, swim lane. So, and it gives you the description as well. So probably maybe when you are doing it on your own. So you can have it vertical or horizontal. So, but I'm going to use this uh, one. So, um, so if you want to add another pool, you just drag it again, just drop it. It will join up by itself, you know. You just drag it and drop. It will, so it's because there's space there. So, so just put it there. It will join up again. So let me just make probably about four lanes. Okay. So you can have it in the, the other way around as well. You understand? You can so you can even have it maybe portrait or you know the lanes portrait in a portrait style or maybe you know landscape or I'm using this um, you know this one. And so yeah. So and what you need to note is like when you are you know, what I try to advise people, you know, when you are drawing up your, you know, your, uh, your business process, always need to make sure 
you know, it's not for everybody that have all your stakeholders. In majority of your stakeholders will not have access to, you know, they will not have visual installed because it's only BAs and you know some technical uh, solution architects that you know that will have access to visual. So it's not everybody that will have license. You know, what you need to do anytime you do this process map, always convert it to. PDF because you can easily just save as PDF because that will help them to be able to visualize it because if you just send it in a file they will not be able to uh, view it so then uh, in your process needs to have a title what title are we giving this let's say uh, recruit uh, recruitment process or we can say recruit staff or recruitment uh, let's say then and I always advise, it's not, uh, sometimes some people don't, but I always, that's, this is what I always do. I try to put, is this the current state or their proposed uh, state? So I can say this is a C's. So this is a C's. So because this is what they are doing now, you know, because you want to understand, you want to try and, you know, document what they are doing now. You understand? That is what you want to document. Then you are going to document what, how they want to be, you know, the sequence that they are going to be doing as well. So you have, anytime you have a seed, you still have to be as well. And so now, so you name your function, like I said, your function could be, it could be in names, it could be tied to. No, not name, sorry. It could be tied to like a role. It could be departments. So I can say HR manager and I can say HR department. So either way. So because of this one, I'll say HR manager uh, and I can say um, uh, line manager. So you just need to highlight it. Uh, let's say line manager. Uh, line manager. And um, then, oh, sorry, so I did that, my manager, and um, this one, what should we think, this one, let's say agency, oh, oh sorry, let's say applicants, or oh, let's say agency, we can say agency, mm. let's say agency, you know, you can have as many as you like here, so then you can have, uh, can the title be the name of the process? Yes, that's what I've just put there. Uh, so, um, so we can say candidates. So the, it will be the name of the process. So candidates. Yes, I hope I've not gotten that wrong. So I can say recruitment. You understand? I say say recruitment, but some people they do use verb. You know, they can say maintain something. <laughs> but what I'm really used to is I can I do say let's say recruitment process. You understand? So that's what I do most times. So I was just a recruitment process. But some people they say recruit uh, like in verb time. But to be honest, uh, this is what I do. <laughs> so and what I do again is that you know because if it documents this, um, you know um, how will you know if somebody is looking at your process maybe in another few months they may not really know when you actually documented this. So what I try to do, then I do remove this uh, face here. I remove that as well. So except maybe it's for face. And what I do here as well, what I do is I had like the version. So sometimes I had uh, the date, like I can even put my name sometimes. I can say Habi. Uh, then um, I'll put um, uh, today's, let's say, 02, um, 07. 2020 and then I can say version 1 that is if it has been approved it will be version 1.0 but let's say this is our first draft I'm going to start with 0 0.1 so that if somebody pick up this in two years time they will be able to know when it was documented and the version as well you understand but if they see it they will not they will know that this is not the approved version they will just know that oh this uh this particular one is uh you know the draft maybe first draft that was done you know definitely they'll be able to know so anyway let's move on to that so then definitely so we need our shapes so what how we do here i will use basic flow so you can see here it's already there it says start so we kick starting this process. Hmm. Let's say the HR manager. It can be the line manager. It can be the agency. But in this case, let's say, uh, okay, let me say this uh, 
Yes. And what you can do, you can change this background. You know that. You can change all these uh, uh, background. I can change these to, I'll see if I can, because of time, but I can, you know, you know, make it more beautiful, colorful, <laughs> you know, to make it more appealing, you know, so that it will not be too boring, you understand, uh, you know, that also F, so, you know, you can, you know, you can add, you can add colors to it, you can make it colorful to yours. So, except maybe the, the, your manager said, no, we don't, we only like, you know, trying, we'll only do, you know, whatever they tell you, <laughs> but, you know, I try to make it colorful, you know, you can change the background, or you can change the background, you know, you can change this or bars where you can, you know, add colors to it, let me just put it that way, so, but let's put it, so we have four different colors, so, so, uh, this is our start button, and what happens, um, I want to hard shift with it because what happened is that the line manager will complete a form. Probably maybe the line manager completes um, like a form. You understand? Let's say the line manager made a request request for sir. So you can see here it's pointed to shape. So I can select all these shapes. So you have different shapes. You just need to know what you can use that for. So this is my shape here. So let's say the line manager... And one thing you need to notice is that any activity like this rectangle is for a task, and it has to start with a verb. So I can say request uh, staff. Request staff. So, like I said, you can change the you know the color of the boxes as well. So let's say, and one thing you need to note that if you are using blue for this. Um, rectangle that means all the rectangles boxes that you will use in this diagram needs to be blue you have to be consistent with the you know with the color so let's say recruit uh, request staff this person is requesting staff then what happened we are sending it to let's say the HR money the HR manager so so we am saying now so this is the process to show how they recruit they carry out the recruitment process so we are saying that the line manager will request a staff, and this person uh, uh, will complete, uh, let's say, complete um, request, let's say, request form. You understand? So, yes. Then what happens? Hmm, let's think. Uh, let me think of what we can do. Then we can say, uh, or let's say the person review the request. And I think that's what I want to do. Request. You can hear this. I'll just say, um, review, review the request form. Okay. So now, if the person review the request form, what happened? So the person needs to decide, decide, is it correct or wrong? Is it complete or right? So, sorry. So what I want to do now, so this is our decision box. This is called decision. So whenever you use this, or this shape, you need to make sure you have yes or no. So you just like you are saying, uh, so I would say, is it complete or is it correct? Let's say, is it uh, accurate or is, uh, let's say, is it complete? Let me just say that. Is it complete? So it's a question. Uh, let's say, is it complete? Sorry, my eyes is really. Uh, is it complete? Yes. So, you know, you're asking a question. So it could be yes or no. So if it's yes, let me just put, so if it's no, what happened, it will send it back. So what I'm saying, uh, so this one will come back, come down here. So what I'm saying, and you can drag as well. So what you can do, I can do this to move it down. It's just grouping, you know, you can group it to drag everything down. So but at the same time, I can adjust the, you know, reduce the width as well. You can expand it. You can, you know, depending on how you want it. If you want to increase the width of the lane, you can do. Let me hide. So, okay. So now I'm saying, is it complete? So this is no. So you need to type no here. So anytime you draw this, I, and if I see no and I don't see yes, I will know that this person is not really, <laughs> is, is not really you know, professional in this. So, you know, sometimes this could be oversight, but please, please, please try as much as possible not to forget that. Anytime you have this, you need to have yes or no. So this is our no. We are saying the, com the form is, is it complete? No. That means uh, it could be. Uh, com uh, let's say 
correct form or let's say update form or let's say correct form. Let's just put it that way. And how about if it's yes, what happened? So if this yes, let's say the person will uh, advertise the position on, on online. So, so if it's yes, so that means I can say yes. You just need to click on the arrow, then you'll be able to type on it. So if it's yes, then advertise on website. It's really tiny, so I can't really see what I'm saying. <laughs> tiny. Uh, uh, okay. I, th I think that should be, that will really help me advertise. Let me just type it myself. It's because it's too tiny, I can't really see what I'm typing, to be honest. Okay, advertise on websites. Mm, then, now, so if the person corrects the form, so because then this is coming back the arrow. I want this array again. Uh, yes. So, okay, let me just use this one. So if the person corrects the form, what happens? This person needs to review again. Oh, I can even see mistake here. Oh, because of the arrow that we, I changed the other sign. Mm. Because my arrow is supposed to have head, arrowhead. I can just see uh, where's my lines. Uh, so I supposed to have. So this is supposed to be going in here. So that is um, uh, where's the head? I hope this. One. I don't, to be honest, I don't know. So I'm not going to waste time on this. So how we have to do this all over next week? Uh, yes, select mm, selector. Yeah, lost. I don't know. I don't know where my the, my arrow head has gone. I don't know. So yes. So f with this, so we have to map the process next week, and yeah, because that's just the without that I can't really do that. I can't do that. So I will do that next week. And so for the business process, uh, so we have high level business process, which is. Um, uh, you know, like the high level, because you can have in the high level, you can have like about maybe eight boxes or maybe five boxes, depending on your on what you are trying to do. And so then this is, uh, the low level is when you now go into more detail. So it can be well, which we call level two. You know, like remember, contest diagram is our level zero, which is like the high level where it shows the data, and the uh, the uh, the level one is like you know, like eye level again, which is a swim lane that you can use the swim lane for, uh, which you can have like just few boxes, like summary of the process. Then the level two is like when you have more details. So like the, maybe the five boxes in level one could now change to uh, maybe level two, you could have 16 because you expand it, you go more detail. So then we go, uh, let's say, so let me quickly show you the notation, uh, uh, notation uh, shapes. A notation symbols because you need to use that. You know, like this one is not notation because I'm using a uh, basic flow sh um, shape for this. So you can see it, but let's check uh, BPMN. So I will just type uh, BPMN. Yeah. So it's different shape. So you use different shape if you want to use. So you can see here. So you can see my stats. So this is my stats. Instead of using this, um, will I say hover or? Uh, so you use this for stats when you are using BPMN shapes. So, but this one's. So you can see here uh, the. So you have different. So this is tax for BPMN. So it's different. You know, it's different. You can see this one is curve. You know, it's curve. So it's different from the rectangle one. So it depends on. Uh, the symbols, you know, some organization they use BPMN to do the drawing, and or some they use just the flow uh, flow chart shapes. So it all depends because, uh, like you can see, the gateway is the same. You know, like the gateway, which is the you know, like the decision box. Uh, what are the seniors when? You... Okay, I will check that question later. So like my hand, you know, my hand we have the same as this in the flow chart shapes but in BPMN so you have uh, you know this is our hand but we'll try and do this next week and we'll try to do this so it's different so you can use BPMN basic shapes and you can use um, 
you can use flowcharts. So depending on what you want to, what you want as well. So it just depends on what the, they are using in the organization. So, but we'll try and do that uh, next week as well. We do, we do the swim lane and also the uh, are using b uh, basic flowcharts, shapes, and uh, BPMN. So, what are the seniors when you use this different flow? I don't understand question, that question. Sorry. Um, sorry. I mean, example when you. Uh, okay. So uh, if you want to show the process, you know, like if they say you should map the process of recruiting uh, staff or maybe how training is being done in the organization, then you have to, you, you know, map the process. You know, yes, cross-functional is the same thing as uh, swim lane, yes. Uh, if you implement a ready-made out of the box system, do you still need to do all this diagram? If you implement a ready-made, yes, you still need to do the diagram because even with the, with the person, the ready-made, how you mean by the ready-made? Because sometimes, like all these um, uh, learning management systems, even if you buy it, they may still have to do maybe a tweak of the, um, they may have to do maybe a little tweak in there, like maybe just configure something for you. It could be. So it depends. So it depends, but most times you have to do the business process, most times, even if you are buying any application, because you want to let the supplier know this is how you are doing things, and this is how you want to be doing things going forward. So you may have to do that. So, but most times I do do that. I do uh, more, um, map the process, so that's when we say we map the process. Uh, example of when you use these different flows, or uh, like I said, you know, if you say different flow, like I t uh, said earlier, the context diagram is for high level technical or uh, technical personnel to be able to know the system that will be interacting with their new system or the proposed system for them to be able to understand how they are going to do the configuration, the solution architect will be able to, they will need this information, you know, for them to be able to know how to implement the project, you know, like the enterprise architecture, you know, they need the context diagram. So for this um, process for the stream lane, it's just for you to understand the process of the sequence of tasks, you know, that is being carried out or activities that is being done uh, in the organization. It's just for you to map it out for anyone to or the supplier or for the technical team to know what do they need to do at when, who needs to do it and, you know, like that. So that is uh, how that is being done. And yeah, so I think uh, yeah, that's all for tonight. So next week, I will uh, I'll try and resolve that, and we'll be able to do the business processes, the cross-functional one, the swim lane, and the using the BPM with the or notation and the basic flow chart uh, next week. And if there's no other question, I think uh, yeah, that's all for today. And thank you.